Welcome, listeners. You are tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie and with Corey. Hello, everybody. Unlocking Your Truth is a talk show about metaphysics and spirituality. <laughs> we broadcast from CIVL on 101.7 FM across the Fraser Valley from the unceded territory of the Stolo Nation. We also live stream ahead of when it gets broadcast on air on our Facebook show, uh, Facebook group, which is called Awaken Your Psychic Abilities, and on my uh, personal YouTube channel as well. So if you're a keener and you would like to be in the chat room while we record the radio show, you can go to either of those two places to do that. And then you can join in the discussion and you can ask your questions live on air. Now, this year we've been doing a series of shows and the series has been about intuition and chakras. So psychic abilities and how they relate to the chakra system. And we're getting towards the end, if not the end really, of that series. So tonight we're actually talking about the feet chakras and earth energy. But we've done a show on all of the major chakras and over 20 different psychic abilities over the last six months. And all of that is to celebrate my book that came out this year, which is also called Intuition and Chakras. And that book teaches you all about your unique profile of psychic abilities and how they relate to your life purpose. Because you are spirit. <laughs> you have a body, but you are spirit. And your psychic abilities are how you as spirit communicate. How you communicate as spirit. So we've been learning all about that. And uh, tonight, like I said, tonight's show is about earth energy and the feet chakras. So you have energy centers in the arches of your feet and those energy centers in the arches of your feet allow you to communicate with the planet. So if you've been watching the whole series, you'll know the very first show, I believe, was on the first chakra and the survival instinct. And we talked about how the first chakra contains information about how to survive and thrive on planet Earth. I mean, sorry, in a physical body on planet Earth. And so, you know, the first chakra has got information about all of your cells, all of your body systems, and so on. Now, when you think about it, the Earth is your larger body, and you can think of yourself like you are a cell on the larger body of planet Earth. And your feet chakras have information about you and your relationship to the planet. So I'm going to, as I like to do, read a little extract from the book. Earth reality instinct is what I've called it, this particular section. Your feet chakras allow communication between you and the planet. They draw vital forces from the planetary body and circulate them within your physical and energy bodies. Your physical body is a cell in the larger body of the earth. And just as your cells are interdependent on your body systems, your physical body relies on the planet for health and well-being. So anyone who's interested in healing, this is a good show to pay attention to, actually, because the earth energy is a healing force. It is a balancing force. And when we consciously learn to run the earth energy through our systems, we bring our systems, our bodies into balance and we promote healing. So connecting to the earth through your feet chakras embeds you in earth's reality matrix. 
It allows an energetic exchange with the Earth's energy grids. You can discharge energy into and receive energy from the Earth through your feet chakras. So you can open the feet chakras and allow the energy of the earth to flow in through those feet chakras into your body, through your mer meridians and into your energy field. But you can also discharge energy to the earth. You can actually ground from your feet chakras, just like you can ground from your first chakra to the center of the earth. And so there's an energy exchange. There's kind of a conversation between you and the planet through your feet chakras. So when these chakras are not functioning well, you won't feel connected to the here and now. And when open to earth energy, you are plugged into planetary conditions. You can ride the waves of change and adjust to global and local energy shifts. And that is especially important in this time of rapid change in our world because the planet is changing so rapidly and everybody's feeling very discombobulated by these rapid energy shifts. And in fact, the energy is now changing so rapidly, it defies comprehension, it defies the intellect. You can't really understand it with your mind, but you can stay in present time with it, you can stay in sync with it, you can stay in balance with it. And one of the ways that you can do that is through this exchange of energy that's happening through your feet chakras. And you can consciously draw energy from the earth. You can have that happening consciously. And so in my book, I say, you know what? You chose to be here right now at this time space reality because it offers an unprecedented opportunity for your involvement. So knowing about earth energy and knowing about your feet chakras helps you to make the most of it because you're kind of here anyway, right? So it's going to help you stay in balance. Running your earth energy through your feet chakras, you can attune your creativity to the creative impulses of the planet. You can ensure your life is in balance and that whatever you manifest is in alignment with the planet. Now, wherever you go on the planet, and I'm sure listening, you've, you're not doing much traveling at the moment, but uh, before the pandemic, we were all traveling around, weren't we? So wherever you go on earth, you integrate local energy with your system. You add your unique energy signature to that location as well. Earth uses your gift to create, maintain, and evolve the natural environment, and nature shares local earth energy with you so you can make adjustments and be in balance with what surrounds you. The feet chakras, like I said at the beginning, they're really closely related with your first chakra. You can ground to the earth through your feet chakras and your first chakra. And in fact, that gives you a very, very stable foundation. We're always talking about grounding on this show and grounding from the first chakra. If you wanna give yourself an extra stable grounding, ground from the feet chakras too. Just think about a tripod and how balanced a tripod is. It gives you a grounding system a bit like a tripod. And, you know, it, it's the earth energy is very, very comforting for the physical body because the body is of the earth. You know, you hear those things they say ashes to ashes and dust to dust, or that man was formed out of clay. We literally are, you know, we're made from the molecules uh, of the planet. That's what forms our bodies. And so, running the earth energy through your system is very comforting for the body, it makes the body feel um, relaxed and connected and attuned and encourages it to come into balance. The earth herself is beyond a master of balancing energies. Everything on this planet is balanced and poised just exactly where it needs to be to sustain life. And so the earth is constant. If you've ever studied science, if you've ever studied biology or 
I guess, geography. Uh, you learn about the cycles on the planet, you know, whether it's water, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and so on. Homeostasis is a form of balance and balancing energies. The planet is a master energy balancer. So when you're grounded, you anchor light. And part of your purpose as an awakening human is to anchor your unique frequency of light here on this earth. And when plugged into the earth, from, from the feet chakras in the first chakra, and when plugged into source, divine source energy from the crown chakra, you're grounding your light into the world and you're helping raising the frequency on the planet. Shine, you're shining your light into the world. And that's your gift. That's your gift to everyone else here, to be here being you. And when you're grounded and you're connected into the planet, you can connect with all those other bright sparks who are also here connected through the planetary grid. So there's a lot in many of the ancient traditions about the energy of the earth. I've been teaching, a, actually I've been teaching a Kundalini class lately and the students are gonna go on to the next level of Kundalini next year, where we're going to be talking about the Kundalini energy of the earth. So Kundalini energy is life force energy. This planet brings life, vibrancy. And so there's a lot of information in many of our ancient traditions and our indigenous people about the planet and the planetary energies, including the planet's Kundalini energy. So think about the Australian Aborigines. They go on walkabout along ancient song lines. The European pilgrims travel along ley lines. These are all pathways in the Earth's energy grid. Um, often this is to visit sacred sites along the way. The Chinese people walk on dragon lines. The Americans walk on spirit lines. All around the world, there's different words for these flow of energy different types of earth energy um, that, that, that we have, that you can experience, that you can sense, that you can exchange with. And um, anyway, there's a little bit of personal stuff that I wrote about next. Just trying to share my experience because, you know, I've lived in six different countries and I used to have a job where I traveled all around the world for my job. So I've visited many, 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 many countries. And so I've had the opportunity to really experience the energy in many different places. And I actually used to work as a scientist that meant that I would go to biodiverse regions on the planet, you know, like the Amazonian jungle or the high altitude deserts and so on. And, um, you know, it's so special to be able to go and visit these different places. You know, and some places just feel blissfully amazing, you know, and, and other places not so much. So I'd love for anyone who's listening to share their experiences, different energy spots that you've traveled to, different places that felt good or didn't feel good. So for example, my example is we went to Copan in Honduras and on the surface in present time reality, that's kind of run by drug lords. <laughs> but the energy there is so powerful and so beautiful. And I just felt like I was cradled in the hand of God while I was there. I also spent some time in the high altitude deserts in Ecuador. And I really didn't like being there. That felt like an alien place for me to be. So, so different places feel different. And, you know, you can there's a difference as well, depending on how many layers of human existence have lived there. The village I come from in England is, they have archeological evidence 
back over eight and a half thousand years back into the bronze age or maybe that's even the stone age you know and then other places you know maybe if you live in north america maybe they don't feel so ancient to you so share with us where you where your earth walk has taken you maybe you've walked on some of these ley lines or these dragon lines i'll tell you a couple of stories of some people that i've met in my practice why don't we do that after the break okay sure yeah let's do that listeners you're tuning in to unlocking your truth with dr leslie and corey tonight we're continuing our intuition and chakra series talking about earth energy and your feet chakras. How exciting foot, is that? Your foot chakras, your foot chakras. Welcome back listeners. This is Dr. Leslie on Unlocking Your Truth and I'm here with Corey. And tonight on our episode of Unlocking Your Truth, we're talking about the feet chakras, and earth energy and it's part of our series that we've been doing on intuition and chakras i think it's probably about the 20 i think it is the 22nd episode actually so we've talked about many different psychic abilities and their relationship to the chakras and tonight we're finishing off with the feet chakras and you might be like well what's the psychic ability channeled through the feet chakras and it relates to communicating with the planet, attuning to the energies on the planet and exchanging energy with the planet. So in my book, I called it earth reality instinct. <laughs> Just like when we talked about the first chakra, we talked about survival instinct. So the feet chakras are plugged in and connected to the planet. So here's a couple of stories from my book, just brief stories. So, I met a man one time after giving a talk about intuition and this person won a psychic reading session with me. I had a competition at this event and it was a really interesting reading because he was part of a secret group <laughs> um, who worked with the energy grids of the earth to keep it balanced and healthy. And um, this person was really shocked that I could see that about him. And what they were actually doing is they were some of these uh, secret government experiments on the planetary uh, weather patterns, the harp stuff. They were using their psychic abilities to counteract harp and other programs that were interfering with the natural cycles on the planet. And so he, he was pretty freaked out that I saw this. <laughs> and really didn't want me to know that. Um, but, you know, this is what they were doing. They were, they were kind of, they were psychics, they were healers, and they were working with the earth energy and the planetary cycles and helping to, um, you know, prevent or work against the research that was harming the natural cycles and weather, plan and weather patterns uh, that were going on. Another example is a client of mine who she lives um, way up north in Canada uh, in a place where there are lots of local legends about a special location, a repository of ancient information stored in the planetary grid. And the local indigenous people are the wisdom keepers of this ancient information stored in the planetary grid and turned out that she had an incarnation uh, a long time ago as one of the ancestors of that indigenous group and so she was coming back to work with them at the time when this grid was opening up and the information was being released and to be made available to everybody. And there are actually lots of energy spots and um, information repositories around the planet. Some famous ones would be places like Uluru in Australia, 
um, let's see if I can think of some others, uh, Glastonbury in England um, and those kind of places. Very potent transformational earth energies. So, so listeners, please feel free to post your questions. You can share your experiences about your feet chakras <laughs> and your, <laughs> your planetary journey. Uh, but you can also ask questions about other things too. That's so okay. We have a question from Julie. Yeah. And Julie says, I try to ground myself every day. Can you tell me if I'm grounded and if it's working, please? Sure. And take your time, Dr. Leslie. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, it's a great question to ask Julie because I'm seeing you are grounding, but I'm seeing that the uncertainty is relating to the tremendous changes that are happening on the planet. And in, in, over the last year, I've seen a few phases with the people coming to me who know my techniques and who know grounding, where people are like, their grounding is all haywire and what's going on. And so recently there's been another period of time like that and people's grounding just, it doesn't seem like it's working. And it has to do with the tremendous changes on the earth. So the grounding doesn't quite feel like it used to. The first phase of that, uh, I was telling everyone, so ground to the new earth, ground to the new earth. So when they were grounding and sending their grounding cord to the center of the earth, if they had the notion that they were grounding to the new earth, then that worked for them. And at that time, when they did that, the grounding cords were, um, looping back to the, all over the surface of the planet to past lifetimes. And there was a sort of multidimensional integration going on. The latest one, um, what I'm saying to people is ground as the person you prefer to be to the version of the planet that you prefer to ground to. So it's a bit like saying, well, you create your reality and there are multiple potential versions of the earth. <laughs> Which one do you want to be on and which version of yourself do you do you want to be? So I hope I haven't made it more complicated for you, but I, what I'm seeing is um, there is some confusion in your grounding and it, it has to do with the rapid change and things feeling so different. So try this, ground as the version of you that you prefer to be on the version of the earth that you prefer to be on. To me, that looks like it would help you. I just kind of did that for you. How do you tell if you're grounded? Well, um, I so get yourself a friend. <laughs> Hopefully you've got one. Sit in a chair, right? Be ungrounded and get your friend to just touch you on the side. And what you'll notice is that you'll, when you're ungrounded, you'll flop around. <laughs> then take a moment to get grounded and then ask your friend to do the same thing. You will not budge. When you're grounded, you are, you are solid, you're here, you're present, you're not a pushover. And you feel more in your body, you feel more in the present moment more focused. So there's lots of ways that you can tell if you are grounded. So do I feel present in my body? Or am I floating off in the clouds somewhere? <laughs> you know, do I feel focused in my present time reality? Or do I feel fuzzy and unfocused? Do I feel stable and strong and anchored or, or not? So those are some clues as to how you can know if you are grounded. Thank you for your question. Okay, next question is, uh, can you look into my energy, Dr. Leslie? This is from Shannon. 
just look into your energy. Okay, sure, Shannon. Let's look at your main growth cycle. Well, and it's interesting because I'm actually seeing you're not as grounded as you need to be for your growth cycle. <laughs> and that your growth cycle actually is relating somewhat to what I was talking about. I'm seeing you really focused on communicating with spirit and, um, you know, connecting, I guess, with the higher dimensions and, um, you know, searching for answers, but not being um, grounded enough to cope with the growth that you're going through and to really anchor and integrate um, those energies. And I see that you said you're going through Kundalini. Well, you need to be really, 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 really grounded to, to run your Kundalini energy because that's an enormous amount of power and energy. And it needs to be balanced by your connection to the planet, by your grounding. So that explains why you don't look grounded enough in a way. Um, so yeah, it feels like you're launching yourself like a rocket, but maybe going a bit faster than the body can handle and maybe not taking the body into account and not grounding enough to deal with the changes that you are creating. Because running your Kundalini is gonna amplify and accelerate your spiritual growth. And it is going to bring a bunch of stuff up in your system as well. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Julie says she's always in the clouds. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people are, Julie. <laughs> a lot of them are. That's why they need to learn how to ground. Okay, I have a question from uh, Jenny. Jenny says, hi, Dr. Leslie, this is Jenny, friends with Ren. I want to ask, what is the chilly electric sensation I get? I seem to be able to bring it on and intensify it, but I have no idea what its utility is. I, th I missed one word there. There's something electric sensation. Electric sensation. Chilly That's electric sensation. Chilly electric sensation. That can be your kundalini. Your kundalini can feel hot and it can feel cold and it can feel like pins and needles. Is it going up your back, Jenny? Or is it... Actually, it doesn't matter. You're, you're, the main channel for the kundalini is up the back, but there are channels everywhere in your system. So... It, that may be your kundalini energy awakening. It looks very well like that might be the case. And you said, what is it and what's the purpose? The kundalini is life force energy. It, it is, its purpose is transformation. It's involved in birth, death, pregnancy, changing from a child into a teenager, conception, all of those biological times where we go through a huge transformation but also can be used as a spiritualizing force so that it basically transforms any energy in its path and brings it into alignment with spirit so if you have things that need to be healed the kundalini will heal them but it will bring them up at a rapid rate and it will also raise your vibration, pierce the chakras, um, amplify your psychic abilities, um, and very amazing. So Jenny, I don't know why you didn't do the Kundalini course this time. <laughs> you just missed Kundalini one. Oh. So she was saying that uh, it almost feels like an aura radiation, um, inward and lasts only a second. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so um, an aura radiation and lasts only a second. Yeah, I mean, Kundalini experiences can involve all sorts of things like flashing lights and, um, you know, so I still think that that's what it is. Oh, that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> 
Okay. So uh, Christine asked the same question that was asked earlier. How do I know if I'm grounded? So if you feel in your body, Christine, um, if you feel present and focused and in and um, what's the word I was using before? Um, not a pushover. And that, that's those are all signs that you are grounded. I'm, I'm seeing that you're having the same issue as the previous person I looked at. Um, looks like there's some confusion over your grounding. I'll also just mention here when I that if you if you've been following me for a long time, you know what I mean when I talk about grounding. But if you haven't, you might have some other notion of what grounding is, because there's a lot of people out there writing about grounding as take your shoes off and go and walk outside and feel the ground. That's not what I mean, you know, or take a slight <laughs> bath. That's not what I mean. What I mean is a very specific energy technique where you um, send energy from your first chakra to the center of the earth like an anchor and it anchors you the high vibration spiritual being into your physical body and it helps you take charge of your reality and it helps you access your psychic abilities hmm. hope that helps well, christine says you've read her before so great okay next question is from uh ali and she says, or he says, I'm not sure which it is. Are you able to tap into my energy and tell me anything I may need to know as, as I continue on my journey of becoming an energy healer? Let's take a look at Ali. And you know, before I look at your energy, I'll just mention the most important thing as an energy healer is to be grounded. It seems to be what we're talking about today, but let's take a look. Well, your energy is interesting. You are like, um, it's interesting. It's like a flower beginning to bloom, but it's a new flower being born out of an old flower. So it's like a kind of a rebirth. And it feels like you're rebirthing yourself into the light and into a greater degree of illumination and clarity. And, um, you know, I guess what comes up to say to you is let go of the past. Just let go of the past. The past is irrelevant. It, you know, what you've done in the past, who you've been in the past, even what you've believed in the past. It looks like there's this big old flower <laughs> that's what used to be you, just like the cocoon of a, of a chrysalis. It, it just let it disintegrate. And, re and be reborn as this beautiful new uh, blossom that you are flowing into and keep your vibration up, stay grounded. Remember to always heal yourself first. Always heal yourself first, take care of yourself first. Um, and it looks like you're very much working on your communication with divine source energy, um, your heart chakra opening. And I see that you do have such beautiful healing energy, actually. So we want to really validate that. And it just looks like the, the more you keep your vibration up, the better and the easier it is for you. And um, we kind of want to just encourage all of that you know, and it even seems like some of the old messages that I would always say to healers, which is, you're only responsible for yourself, you're not responsible for the other people that you're healing, ultimately, they're responsible for it, don't take on their energy, <laughs> and try and heal it within your own space, you know, all of these things, it just looks like, well, that's the old way. And that's part of the old um, flower that you're disintegrating and letting go of. Hope that helps, Ali. You've got lovely energy. Now it's time to take a break. Another one. Listeners, we have, been... we have lots of questions. That's so. great. You've been tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie, and we'll be back after some messages. Oh. 
Welcome back, listeners. You're tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie and with Corey. This evening's topic is Earth Energy and the Feet Chakras and our relationship with the planet. And we've been having some great questions. <laughs> um, a lot to do with grounding. And uh, we welcome your questions and please ask some more. Yes, Ali says, uh, she says, thank you so, so much. Okay, and we'll get to everybody's questions, so everybody needs to be patient. Okay, the next question is from Faith. Faith says, I'm trying to practice grounding every day. Is there any other way I can use the Earth's energy to help me in my spiritual growth? Yes, we talked about it already in the show, actually. So you can allow the earth energy to flow in through your feet chakras and circulate through the meridians in your legs. And you can even loop it back down your grounding and it will give you a stronger grounding cord. And you can allow the earth energy to melt away energy blocks. So we, we work with earth energy a lot in my unlocking your... Um, Gosh, what's the name of my main course, Cory? <laughs> unlocking your uh, intuition. Unlocking, unlocking the blocks. Un yeah. Unlocking your intuition course. I think that's the name of it. Gosh. Um, it's actually, I'm starting a new group of students in the new year. So that will teach you how to, how to work with the earth energy to heal yourself, amongst many other things. Wonderful. Okay, this is a question from Devita, and Devita says, when trying to meditate ground while sitting, I start spinning in circles or rocking back and forth. Is that normal? How can I focus more and get rid of the thoughts in my head? So sometimes that spinning in circles when you're meditating has to do with the amount of energy you're running through your system. And often, pe sometimes people, when they're running their Kundalini, will do this. Um, so that's the first part of your question that that spinning in circles, I, I assume you mean that your body's doing this. It, it's the energy that you're running through the system. And then the other part of the question was, how can I stop my mind going in circles? Um, so you guys need to take my unlocking your intuition course, because it answers all of these questions and it gives you um, the spiritual practices to help you with that. So it has to do with where you seat your conscious awareness. Can't give away too many secrets this show, can I? I've already <laughs> given away a secret that I don't normally give away until it's in my course. So um, yeah, it has to do with where you seat your consciousness and learning the difference between what's part of the body and the thinking mind and the brain and what's truly you, the spirit, and then how to be in your body as spirit apart from the intellect. And that's taught also in that course, which I feel like I need to, to I've been only been teaching it for years and years and years and taken like, you know, loads of students through it. But for some reason I've got a mental block. It's because the name's similar to the radio show. That's probably why. That's it. Oh. Oh, that, there's a problem with the website. <laughs> That's no. nice. <laughs> That's nice. Okay. Okay. So uh, next, in that case, next question. Can you explain seeing flashes of light? I keep seeing flashes, sparks of light. What does that mean? That's from Misty. Oh, gosh. Well, I guess that could mean all sorts of different things, couldn't it? Um, you're seeing energy and what is that energy it could be all sorts of things it could be an energy being um it could be um sorry i'm distracted by this fatal error on my website <laughs> could be an energy being it could be um you seeing your own energy um it could be all sorts of different things Okay, so Melissa says, hello, Corey and Dr. Leslie. I'm working with a group daily and enjoying it. We are working with earth energy. Could you take a look at us as a group and give your old, old, overall opinion? 
who is that name? Melissa. So work, there's a group and they're working on the earth energy. Well, it looks like you're, you tell me, but it looks like you're working with the earth energy in terms of giving healing to the earth because I'm seeing all these healing hands, you know, around the planet, um, pumping light into the planet. And so it looks good. It looks like you're, you're not always, you're forgetting a little bit about the Southern Hemisphere or the, <laughs> it looks like it's all Northern Hemisphere and then it's a bit missed out underneath the bottom in the Southern Hemisphere for some reason. That's what I'm seeing. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's it while I ground and breathe and freak out about my website. No, we'll <laughs> just finish the show. That. We'll finish the show and we'll get to the website. Five minutes yeah. isn't going to make a big difference. Yeah. And it's probably the, uh, uh, it's probably the server. It looks like the server. Okay, so Julie says, I get a wave of uplifting energy, tingle, tingly, tearfully happy rush, either from heaven and earth. What is that? First happened as a little girl. A wave of tingly energy from heaven and earth. Is that what she said? It's a wave of tingly energy, uh, uh, uplifting energy, tingly, tearful, tearfully, happy rush a happy rush either from heaven and earth or earth maybe she says uh, it says and but maybe she means yeah or. so what, I mean, what's you're, that? you're experiencing energy again that could be your kundalini energy you could be experiencing the earth energy the cosmic energy so and these are all things that we learn to do in the course that i was trying to look up is run the earth and cosmic energies consciously through our systems so I think you've been just having an awareness of the different energies, cosmic earth and so on. Hmm. Do we have any more questions? Yes, we do. And it says, uh, this is from Misty again. Leslie, can you tell me what's happening with my leg? Well, one of them's got uh, the energy's not flowing as well as the other one, and the energy looks kind of well energetically swollen. I mean, the leg might not be swollen, but there's some dark energy around the leg, and um, it feels like it's relating to feeling stuck or feeling like you can't move forward or you're you're not getting where you want to be. Um, fast enough um, or, or some kind of belief it's almost like there's a lead weight that is um, feel like you have to carry this around with you and it's hindering you so there's some energy coming up in your leg that you're wanting to release and let go of and I'm also seeing a past life picture in there that looks like it relates to one of the world wars being a soldier in the trenches and all of this death and destruction all around you and no escape from it and it looks like it's just been lit up because of the global situation and the pandemic and everything that um it's um it there's a feeling of the same kind of limitation like i can't do everything i want i can't go everywhere i want that there's all of these limits and restrictions. So um, you don't have to carry that energy around you, with you. So ground and release it. Okay, thank you. And we have a question from Christine. Christine says, how do you know if it's cosmic energy or not? Sometimes I feel stuck in a place.
how do you know if it's cosmic energy or not? So cosmic energy is the energy of the cosmos. So basically all energy is cosmic energy, but there are different vibrations of cosmic energy. Um, I don't know how to link those two parts of your question. How do you know if it's cosmic energy? And sometimes I feel stuck. <laughs> um, how you know it's cosmic energy is um, by learning to run cosmic energy from somebody like me who will teach you how to do it and then you will know about it. Um, sometimes I feel stuck in a place. So I can see how sometimes you feel stuck and I can see some stuckness in your energy. Um, what can we say about the stuckness? It just looks like a backlog of experiences that you're wanting to release and let go of, and it's all just backed up in your system, like energetic constipation. <laughs> but it's sort of like these picture memories and experiences. So stuff not being processed fast enough, just being held on to and stopping up the system. That's the answer. That's the answer. Uh, by the way, uh, Misty says, yes, that's right. Wow, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question. Oh, oh good. You. Uh, Earlier on in the first part of the show, you mentioned the matrix. And when I think of the matrix, and I think when a lot of people think of the matrix, they're thinking of the, the movie and how we're all supposedly living in a in in a in the matrix in a, an unreality. So how, how do you how do you um, how do you um, identify this matrix or what is it exactly that you're talking about yeah so that's not what I, I was talking about something different i was talking about that the energy grid of the earth so just as you in your human body you have energy lines meridians or nadis depending on what what or, or just energy channels depending on what spiritual tradition you follow um, and these are energy channels throughout your system that where energies flow the planet also has energy channels and it's more like an energy grid over the surface of the planet. And that's what I was talking about, the planetary grid, the planetary energy lines. Okay. The other thing also, again, with you know, doing so many of these, uh, discussing so many of these um, abilities and, the and relating to the chakras, um, the, the first chakra is used to ground and, and eliminate negative energy into the earth as well as pull up, pull up positive energy. How is that different than the, the, the um, earth energy that we're talking about using the feet? The first chakra is a conduit to your information about physical reality including the physical body, how to stay alive in a physical body. And the reason that we ground from the first chakra is because, well, one of the reasons, there's many reasons, you're creating a connection with your local smaller body to the larger body of the earth. So first chakra is a conduit for spiritual information about physical reality, how to stay alive in the physical body. There's a lot of innate intelligence around um, just the cellular programming and everything to do with you know, the health and wellness of your body. The feet chakras relate to your larger body, the planet Earth. So the first chakra is relating to your body, you might say, or being in a human body and feet chakras are relating to the larger body of the earth 
So just like you have cells in your physical body um, that are a part of your larger body, you could think of yourself as a cell on the body of the earth. So the feet chakras are relating to the planetary body. The first chakra is more relating to your own body. You might think of it that way. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. So it doesn't, using your feet chakra really doesn't have anything to do with getting, dumping negative energy then. You can. You can ground from any chakra actually. And folks, don't imagine what I'm meaning because again, take my courses to learn this because you don't ground everything to the earth. But um, you, you can, all chakras can be grounded to inappropriate ways. So you can ground from your feet chakras. You can ground from your first chakra. Would I have to stand on my head? No. <laughs> if, I, if I'm grounding my head and my Don't crown give chakra. away all my secrets, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem at all. Well, that's just about, that's just about the show for today. Um, we want to talk about the next few shows. The next show is on, I'll write it down here for everybody. But it's on... I'll, I'll wait till I write it. Let's let's make it a let's make it a surprise. And our next show, drum roll please. And for here, I got to write everything twice. So our next show is on the fifth of January. Yeah, we're taking a break for the holiday season. So. It'll be a brand new year, and uh, yeah, we look forward to reconnecting. Yep. At <clears throat> it's going to be on automatic drawing, art, and writing, which That's is exciting. really interesting, I find. It is, and we've never talked about it before, so yes, we that have. will be, have we? No. Okay. <laughs> we, we've been doing it for five years, so we've talked about it. No longer than that, we... we, yeah. we, we uh, Oh no, it would be just right right around in the first 20 shows or so, I think, on religious art. And, and then we talked about the um, uh, automatic ground, uh, automatic writing. But it's, it's going to be interesting. And I just want to share um, uh, 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 an image I saw on Facebook today, which was uh, regarding COVID. And it shows a a busy, busy mall where everybody is shopping in their mask, but they're all standing next to each other, like almost shoulder to shoulder. And the caption on it was says, we're not allowed to go home for Christmas, for, uh, visit our family for Christmas, but we can Christmas shop. Very interesting. I just wanted to mention that to everybody because it is Christmas, but you, you want to be safe out there while you're shopping. And please try to keep your distance from people because I've noticed going to the mall, even, even just to pick up some groceries, people are starting to get antsy and rushing around. So please, please take care of yourself. We want you back here all safe and sound. Well, Patty wants to know what automatic drawing is. Well, sh <laughs> the 5th of January, we'll tell you all about it. Yeah, tune in on that. To that show you'll like it yeah it'll be great <laughs> <laughs> all right anyway. everyone well thank you for tuning in i have to run and go emergency emergency website now have a safe have a safe holiday season and enjoy yourself and all the best for you and your family and in the new year as well take care everyone bye